Hi, my name is Alita Lasky. I'm an assistant professor at Boston College. And what I'm presenting today is part of a cross, larger cross-national study looking at children's understanding of place value. And then within America, we were particularly interested in differences between programs. So we were interested in how children understand the place value and base 10 structure of the number system and how that transfers over to their arithmetic problem solving, particularly their choice of strategies. So when we did a theoretical analysis of the Montessori approach, that's one particular area where we thought Montessori might show an advantage, both because of the consistency of materials, for example, the bead bars and the units show up consistently as they move from primary into lower elementary, and the consistency or transparency of the concepts in the different materials. For example, the color coding of units versus the tens place versus the hundreds place. So what we did was we took Montessori children who were both in kindergarten and first grade in private Montessoris and compared them to high SES public school children who were public school kindergartners and public school first graders. And we gave them two sessions. In the first session, they were given double-digit numbers and asked to represent them with these blocks. So these would be the tens blocks and the unit blocks. And so what we would expect is if you give them a number like 17, they should take one ten block and seven unit blocks as opposed to counting out 17 unit blocks. If you gave them a number like 36, they should take three ten blocks, six unit blocks. And that would suggest that they have a strong base ten representation. In the second session, we asked them to mentally solve arithmetic problems. So they had no materials or paper and pencil available to them. So what we were looking for there was their accuracy on the arithmetic problems, as well as their strategy choice. So one strategy that's very closely associated with an understanding of base 10 is the use of decomposition, which would mean something like an 8 plus 7 you make it into a simpler problem. So you take 7, you break it up into 2 plus 5, you say 8 plus 2 equals 10, your 5 extra units is 50. Or in a problem like 25 plus 37, you break off the 10s, you say 2 plus 3 tens is 50, 7 plus 5 units is 12, and then you get to 62. So that's more of a conceptual measure of taking your place value, understanding it, and transferring it to a different task. What we found was that at kindergarten, there was an advantage in the Montessori kindergartners. They were better able to represent the double digit numbers in a base 10 way using these materials. And that's exciting because these are materials that Montessori kindergartners have never seen. So it means they were able to transfer their understanding of bead bars and unit beads to a material they'd never seen before. However, that advantage in this representation of numbers did not transfer to any advantage on the arithmetic measures. They were no more accurate significantly than public school children at solving arithmetic problems mentally accurately. They did not significantly choose to use decomposition more frequently. And when they chose to use decomposition, they didn't execute that strategy more accurately. So we were thinking that it was possible that the public school children choose to use decomposition just as frequently, but they don't really do it well. Turns out there's no difference there either. And then by first grade, all the differences washed out. There was no advantage or differences between the two programs on any of the measures by first grade. So there doesn't seem to be any clear advantage of the Montessori approach for understanding base 10 and transferring that to arithmetic problems. And one of the questions this raises is how can we maintain kindergartners' early advantage and build on it as they move into the lower elementary Montessori? The other thing you see is that between the kindergarten, the spring of the kindergarten year Montessori, and the spring of the first grade Montessori, there's very little growth. But in the public schools, between the spring of kindergarten and the spring of first grade, there's larger gains. So what is happening in that fall of first grade in public school that's making such a big difference um, is something that we need to know. Um, and then what can we do as kindergarten moves into first grade so that we can continue their growth pattern and have them on the same trajectory so that we're building on their early advantage. Another caveat, though, to the study is that because we wanted to control for SES as much as possible, both the private Montessori was tended to be higher socioeconomic 
so we used a higher socioeconomic public school group. It is possible that because they have very enriching home environments, that the differences in programs don't matter as much. Whereas if you were comparing lower SES children in Montessori versus public, what they get for curriculum really matters because they don't have other opportunities at home. So that's possible. That's our conclusions. Thank you.